Hey guys, and good morning. Welcome to our math lesson. I am so very excited today because we are going to be getting into our first taste of partitioning, which is leading into fractions in third grade. I am so excited because fractions are such a huge part of learning. Starting in second grade, you get a little taste of halves and thirds and fourths and what that means. In third grade, you start looking at what fractions are and how to use them in math. Fourth grade, you get into um, using fractions in even more detail. And then fifth grade, you start adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. And then that just carries on throughout your middle school career, your high school career, and then on into life as well. So fractions are a huge, important part of learning, and I'm excited to start sharing that with you. I love fractions. I love teaching fractions. After teaching fifth grade and fourth grade for seven years, it was a huge part of my teaching, and so I'm excited to start this with you guys. Um, I asked you guys before this lesson, if you are able to, and if you have the materials at home, these are some things that you'll need. So I wanna give you a chance to get those items if you don't have them already. If you don't have them in your home, that's totally fine. You can draw them, okay? You can draw this on a piece of paper. But the items that you'll need, <clears throat> you are going to need four circles, and the circles should be just a few inches across. Okay, so four circles. You can cut them out of colored paper. If you don't have colored paper, you can cut them out of um, notebook paper. Whatever you have at home is fine. Um, you're also just going to need a blank piece of paper as well. It can be colored, it can be white, it can be lined, whatever you have. If you have cardboard at home, whatever you have that you can use is great. The other thing that you're going to need is scissors. Okay, that's important. And then if you have one at home, a glue stick. But if you don't have a glue stick, tape would be fine. And if you don't have either of those, you can just place them on the paper and do the best you can. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, to start with, I'm gonna share my screen with you. And there's something delicious on the screen in front of you. How about some cookie cake? Give me a thumbs up if you love cookie cake. I know that I love cookie cake. I remember Harrison's family brought in some delicious cookie cake earlier this year, and everybody in the class was gobbling it up because it's so yummy. When I found this picture on Google, I was like, drooling because I wanted some cookie cake right now. So imagine that I invite you to my birthday party, okay? And imagine that it's just you and me at the birthday party, okay? And we have this cookie cake sitting in front of us and we have to share this cookie cake. So let's say I get my knife out, okay? And I cut the cookie cake like this. Hmm. How would you feel if I gave you this little piece and I got this big piece? How would that make you feel? I, I feel like if I got that little piece and my best friend got that giant piece, I would be a little bit upset. I'd be grateful for some cookie cake, but at the same time, it doesn't seem fair. That's because it isn't. When we are partitioning a circle, we need to make sure that we're fair with the way that we partition it. So you have to make sure that that line, where you cut it, goes right down the middle. So now, if I were to take half of that cookie cake and you take half of that cookie cake, it would be fair, okay? Partitioning is all about being fair. So what we just did to this cookie cake is we cut it into halves, all right? Halves are when you take something, you take a shape, and you cut it into two equal pieces or two fair pieces. That's what halves are. So let's say that we invite another friend to the party. So let's say it's you, it's me, and your mom. We're all coming to my birthday party and we're all gonna share this cookie cake. Well, what happens if I make another cut in the cookie cake, just like this? So I've got one down the middle and I've got one on the side. Is that fair? No, these pieces are not fair. It wouldn't be fair if I get all of this and then you get this and then your mom gets this tiny little piece. That's not fair. So in order to cut the cookie cake into three equal pieces, we have to find a way to do it in a fair way. So there's a very special way we do this. 
match. We're not able to use our lines and cut it into three equal pieces because regardless, those side parts, they're gonna be smaller because that's where the circle curves and that's going to be smaller. It's not fair. So the special way that we do it looks like this. We use a fat Y is what I call it. The fat Y cuts the circle into three equal pieces. So let me show you how to do this. I've got my dot cam figured out. Okay, we're gonna draw our circle. And I know my circle is not perfect. And in order to cut it into three equal pieces, you draw a fat Y. Okay, so there are my three equal pieces. One, two, three. Okay, well let's say that we have one more person come. Let's say it's me, it's you, your mom, and your dad. We all come to my birthday party and we're all trying to share this one cookie cake. How can we take this cookie cake and cut it into four equal and fair pieces to share? What if I take my line and I add another one here? So I have one, two, three, four pieces. Do you think that would be fair? The answer is no. It wouldn't be fair because once again, these side pieces are going to be curved and they're gonna be smaller than these larger pieces. So in order to make this fair, this is how we would cut the cookie cake to get four equal pieces, okay? And then just to show you how to do that, let me erase my thirds. We're gonna cut it into halves and then cut it into halves again to get one, two, three, four equal pieces. Okay. So now that you've gotten a taste of what halves, thirds, and fourths are, let's do a little quiz to see if you remember, okay? I'm gonna show you a picture on the screen and you're going to tell me, is this circle cut into halves, thirds, or fourths? Here we go. Move this. All right, looking at the picture on the screen, is this circle cut into halves, thirds, or fourths? Okay, I agree, it is cut into halves, but why? Why would we call this halves? The answer is that this circle is cut into two equal pieces, and two equal pieces are halves. Okay, here's the next one. Do you think this circle is cut into halves, thirds, or fourths, and why? I think the circle is cut into thirds because it's one, two, three equal pieces. Three equal pieces. Okay, the very last one, is this circle cut into halves, thirds, or fourths, and why? I think this circle is cut into fourths because it's cut into one, two, three, four equal pieces. Very good job. All right, so for our activity today, now you're gonna need your materials that I had you bring. I'm gonna go ahead and get mine out. We're gonna get some practice with creating halves, thirds, and fourths. Let me move myself up here. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is find one circle. It can be any one that you have, any color, whatever you choose. So take one of your circles. We are gonna take this circle and we are going to cut this circle into halves, okay? So if you look on the screen, I'm gonna take my scissors and I am going to cut the circle right down the middle to create two equal pieces. Go ahead and do that with your circle. 
Okay, so now in front of you, you have halves. Okay, you have a circle that is cut into halves or two equal pieces. The next thing you're going to do is create, um, take your next circle, any color, any, any one that you have, and you are going to cut this circle into thirds. Now, this is going to be a little trickier, so we're going to do this together. Take your circle and you can place it in front of you and you're going to draw your fat Y. It is okay if it's not perfect, guys. Don't feel like it has to be perfect. We're not perfect, but just do the best that you can. But draw a fat Y and make it come down and you've got one, two, three equal pieces. Once you're done with that, you can take your scissors and you can cut on the lines that you drew. It makes it a little bit easier for you. Okay, and as you can see, mine are not perfect, but do the best you can, it's all that matters. So now we cut one circle into halves, which is two equal pieces, one circle into thirds, which is three equal pieces. So we're gonna take our last circle and we are gonna cut this into fourths, which is four equal pieces, okay? So in order to do this, you are going to cut your circle into half, just like that, right down the center. And then you're gonna cut it into half again. So I just put it right back together, cut it into half again, so that I have my four equal pieces. Okay? So I'll give you a moment to do that. When you're done, you'll have one circle left over. I just wanted to make sure that you had an extra one in case you made a mistake. You have one to use for that um, mistake. So if you have that extra one, you can use it for whatever you'd like in your picture. Um, but if you don't have it, if you made a mistake, that's fine. So now that we have our three circles, we have one cut into halves, one cut into thirds, and one cut into fourths. So you are going to create a flower garden. This is where you get to get creative and you get to be artistic. You're going to need your glue stick and you are going to glue down your flower pieces wherever you'd like to place them on your picture. Okay, so I'm going to place mine like this. I'm making kind of like a puzzle. You can still see that they're two parts, but they come together. Okay, and I would do that for all of the pieces that I have. And then when I'm done, I can start using my creativity to create my flower garden. So for this first flower, I might draw a stem and a leaf. Okay, then I might wanna add some petals to my flower. Okay, I might want to add a face on there, some grass at the bottom, a sun in the sky, whatever you can come up with. This is your art project, but I just want you to make sure that you're using your halves, your thirds, and your fourths as the centerpiece for this art project so that you're remembering that partitioning is important and that we use partitioning today and we did some practice with it. Please get creative. If you have glitter at home, feel free to use it. If you have um, googly eyes, if you have pom-poms, whatever you can come up with is fine with me. Make sure it's okay with your parents too. And um, get creative. And then when you're done, snap a picture of it and you can put it onto the lesson on Seesaw for your assignment. All right, I hope you enjoyed our first step into partitioning today. I will see you guys tomorrow for some more practice. Have a wonderful afternoon. See ya.